All right, party people. So we got to finish up the shifter upgrades that we started about a month or so ago. So far, dude, there's so much that's new on the Civic Type R, it's not even funny. I actually got a ton of videos coming up because we got wheels, suspension, downpipes, exhaust. What else we got? We got new headlights, new side markers from the side markers that I previously installed, and new intercooler as well. So a lot of videos coming up. I just got it all done at once and I'm gonna be making videos kind of as I go. And there's even more coming up, but today we're gonna talk about shifter upgrades for the Civic Type R or the just any 10th generation Civic that has a manual transmission. Previously, we already installed the Poco shift knob. Um, that was a shift knob from Acuity that claimed to reduce the shift throw just by reducing the height of the shifter. It's countersunk, so it sits deeper. And from the test in the previous video, it legitimately reduced the shift throw, which I thought was kind of crazy. And then we also installed the Acuity shifter bushings. They're spherical bushings, just to be straight up. I really wasn't expecting the shifter bushings to make as big of a difference that they did. Um, I didn't do an install video because it's kind of convoluted. Thankfully, Acuity has install guides for all of their stuff. Doing the shifter cable bushings is a little bit of a process. You gotta yank out the battery, you gotta yank out the intake, you gotta yank out the charge pipe for the intercooler, but it's so worth it in the end. So we got that done, that was about it. I mean, basically the only real shifter upgrade that we did was bushings. So they sent me a couple of other things. We have we have new base bushings. So on currently on the Honda Civic Type R or any other Honda, where the shifter assembly bolts to the floor, it has these little rubber bushings inside. And these are solid. Essentially what that's gonna do, it's gonna have less give in it when we go into gear. The other part that they sent is what's called a shifter rocker. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna narrow our shifter gate. So whenever you're in neutral and you move your shifter side to side from left all the way to the right, that's the width of your shifter gate. This is gonna narrow that so that we can actually get into gear quicker. We'll look at this a little bit closer as we're doing the install. They also sent the shifter centering spring. Now essentially what that is, is that's the spring that pushes it back to neutral or when you're coming out of gear and it automatically centers, that's what that spring does. It's just a stronger spring. Now I'm not gonna do a complete DIY on this because Acuity has videos for every single thing and I think they've done a phenomenal job with their install guides. However, we are gonna go through it and I'm gonna tell you if I have any problems installing it and then we're gonna drive it around and find out whether or not this stuff actually makes a difference or not. All right, so this is the actual uh, rocker upgrade. The OEM rocker that comes on the Civic Type R or any other Honda is made out of plastic or polymer. And this one is metal. So it should reduce the give when we're going into gear. And you know, like I mentioned, I really didn't expect the difference that the actual shifter cable bushings were gonna make. But judging from those little bitty upgrades, I can't wait to see what all of this stuff is actually gonna do to the car. I'm also gonna make sure to link everything down in the description in case you see something you wanna pick up. I'll link to this as well as the bushings, as well as the centering spring, and I'll also link to the base bushings, link to the shifter cable bushings, and the Poco shift knob that I reviewed in the last video. And then I'll also put links to the tutorials that Acuity made, that way if you do pick these up, you'll have a tutorial that you can refer to when you're doing the install. Once you're in the car, you're gonna need a couple tools to get everything apart. Number one, you're gonna need some sort of panel poppers. These are from Acuity as well. You don't have to use their brand, any panel poppers will do. Also, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket with an extension, and you're also gonna need an eight millimeter socket with an extension, and there's probably gonna be a couple other tools, I just can't think of them. So basically what we have to do is we have to take this entire center console out of the car. It's not as bad as it looks. I've watched quite a few videos on it, and if we put our heads together, we should be able to make this happen. So let's get to it. If you have any wires or anything plugged in down here, make sure you go ahead and unplug those. It's also a good idea to empty out your center console, which you'll see why here in a second. But if I'm not mistaken, we start out by taking off this shifter assembly, this little th where we have our modes and our parking brake and stuff. Also make sure that your parking brake is engaged before you start doing all this. Because once you disconnect it, if your parking brake's not engaged, you might be screwed. So we start out by going along these edges all the way down 
with our panel popper on both sides. If it's your first time you've ever done this, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but it's actually not too bad. Also on the Type R, there's three connectors behind here that we gotta disconnect, one for the uh, mode selection, one for the parking brake, and then one for the brake hold. I almost forgot to mention, you're also gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver to take out these two screws right here. We also gotta take our shifter off. Um, thankfully on this shifter, because it's not the OEM shifter, we don't gotta worry about any lock nuts. But if you have the OEM shifter, you're gonna need to get a wrench to hold it and you're gonna basically have to turn it in two different directions. I actually have a tutorial on that in my previous video. So now we can start taking off this assembly right here. So we're just gonna reach underneath and start trying to pry this up a little bit. There we go. All right, and then underneath here, we got three connectors. One on the, that side, then two on the driver's side. All right, so everything's kind of a mess right now. Um, as you can see, I got all the center console out, but I showed you what the Acuity rocker looked like, and this is what the OEM plastic rocker looks like. So theoretically, this should stiffen things up. Down here, we have the base bushings. They're all torqued down to 12 foot-pounds. I may have accidentally stripped that one. I'll have to work on that later. Thankfully, I have ways to remove it. And then we have the Acuity shifter spring, right here and you can see here this is the oem spring is now i just got to reattach this shifter cable and we'll be able to see you know how much tighter and everything that it is shift knobs back in place everything's reconnected the only thing i haven't done is reinstalled the center console yet essentially it narrows the gate here and when you're in gear there's a lot less play as well if you have a stock Civic, um, you can actually check that out. I totally forgot to record the uh, before and after, but you can see I'm in first gear and there's like no wiggle there. Coming down to second, no wiggle there. Third, very much no wiggle. Fourth, fifth, a little bit of wiggle. And then in six, a little bit of wiggle. Um, overall, the side to side motion is stiffer. It's more mechanical. All right, guys, so I finally got everything reinstalled. The entire interior is back together. And I think that's the hardest thing about putting in these shifter upgrades is taking out that center console. It's not that bad, but I will say, just be careful of dropping bolts um, you know, down into the center console because if you're putting it back together and you drop a bolt, hopefully you don't have to take it all back apart, but that's something to be wary of. I would invest in one of those um, telescopic magnets just in case. Let's go for a drive real quick. We're gonna see how it feels. So right now we are at full stage two acuity shifter upgrade. So like I mentioned earlier, shifter cable bushings under the hood. We got the base bushings under the shifter assembly, and then we got the rocker in the spring, and then we have the POCO reduced height shift knob. And consequently, that shift knob acts as a short shifter adapter as well, so no need to add a short shifter adapter, at least for the Type R, because Acuity doesn't make a short shifter adapter 
for the Type R. So this is the full stage two. And then in the future, they're gonna send out one of their full shifter assemblies and we're gonna see which one we like the best. So let's stop talking, let's just go for a drive. I'm not gonna do much talking while I'm driving. I just want you guys to see the shifts and I might talk a little bit. So I can just, I can tell already that the width, the gate width of the gears is, is really narrow. So, there's very little slop when you're in gear. One good thing though is you really know when you're in gear. There's no guessing about it. Still a quick little pull. I do like the fact that there's less slop in the gear. But to be honest, I don't notice it that much. party people so i figured i would give you guys kind of my final opinions knowing what i know now about these shifter upgrades um currently i've been running the full shifter upgrade unit for about a month and prior to that i was running just the cable upgrades and the poco shift knob for a couple of months i wanted to kind of dissect this kit and talk about what each upgrade does or is supposed to do and then i wanted to talk about you know the different options that you can get and which one i think is the best bang for the buck all of these upgrades that we're doing to our shifters ultimately what everyone's goal is is to make it as most like a gated shifter as possible without actually being a gated shifter. And a gated shifter is something like you would see in a Lamborghini Murcielago. I think the old Ferrari F430s that had the manual transmissions, they had a gated shifter. And so the main goal is to make it as much like that as humanly possible. Let's talk about the cable bushings. Um, from the factory, it has soft rubber cable bushings. This results in a more spongy feel whenever you're shifting. It also gives you a more numb feel. It's harder to find your gear and you when you do finally get into gear sometimes you don't know that you're in gear because it was kind of soft now the opposite to that is getting solid cable bushings now the problem with solid cable bushings is they tend to wear out your cable bushings because they don't allow for any flex or movement and then ultimately resulting in snapped cable bushings which nobody wants but it's all over the forums where people have used solid cable bushings and broke their cable so although the center of it is solid it has a spherical bushing in it that allows it to move every which way in addition to that they've added what they call an elastomer ring so with the elastomer ring and the spherical bushing it allows it to move around and it gives it a little bit of flex but when you install them and start shifting you, it definitely improves the confidence you know you're in gear when you go into gear there's no guessing like oh crap am i in gear that part was completely eliminated with the cable bushings now with the base bushings on the oem civic type r you know it had these rubber bushings that bolted it to the floorboard and then the newer ones have just solid now i can't really attest to how effective they are and we'll talk more about that here in a second but from what acuity website said is the OEMs give it more of a spongy feel whereas the solid ones give it a more precise mechanical feel. So now let's talk about the centering spring. Um, the centering spring you can definitely feel the difference. Um, it definitely does help guide your hand when you're going from one gear to the next. I feel like with the OEM spring because it's weaker you have more tendency to go too far outside the range in which you need to. I think that definitely does help in preventing mischiefs um, at least in the way that it feels I haven't had any mischiefs in my car. The only things that I have had is I've had a second gear grind a couple of times, but the times that I did have it, I know 100% that my foot wasn't on the floor. And then the other problem that I've had prior to doing these upgrades was I would get fifth gear lockout, which is strange. I'd just be cruising down the road and can't find fifth for some reason. All of that has been eliminated with these, but with that centering spring, like I said, I feel like it just kind of glides you into gear and you don't go outside the range of the gate so to speak. Now let's talk about the rocker. So with the rocker, um, its main goal is to reduce lateral play while in neutral 
as well as when you're in gear. And it's also meant to reduce the width of the gate. So when you're going in gear, it's supposed to help you find the gear easier and faster. And with that, I can totally attest that it does work. I do notice a difference when I'm shifting. Let's talk about my final thoughts, knowing what I know now. In my personal opinion, based on the time that I've had with this, because I got to drive it for a couple of months with just the base bushing upgrade before I did the stage two, I personally feel like 85% of the total feel from the stage two kit comes from just the base bushings, okay? And base bushings, I think they cost around $70. The next 10% of the feel, I feel like comes from the spring and the rocker upgrade. And combined, those are about $132. This is if you buy everything separately. And then the remaining 5% of the feel, I feel like comes from the base bushings. Now, with that said, there are multiple ways you could go about this. Like my, my goal with this is to figure out, okay, how can you get the most for your money for doing these upgrades without wasting any money? So if you bought all those pieces in the stage two kit separately, they cost for the type R, they cost $231. And if you buy them as a kit, it's $224. So you save a couple bucks if you buy the full kit. The stage one kit comes with the base bushings, it comes with the centering spring, and it comes with the cable bushings. And I feel like that, may be one of the best bangs for the buck because it's only $120. The only part that's missing from the stage one that's included in the stage two for the type R is the rocker upgrade, which is an additional hundred and something dollars. For me, regarding the type R, I feel like you would get much better bang for your buck with the stage one kit versus the stage two kit. And it's $104 cheaper. Now, with that said, if money's not an option, from what I've been told from people that I know that have, that have it, if you get the full drop-in like stage three kit that they have, it's like 500 something dollars, but they said they would have wished that they would have went with the full drop-in unit before just doing minuscule upgrades. Like everyone says that it, it changes your life. And I don't know yet. I'm hoping that I will be able to test out the full drop-in shifter here in the near future. That way we can get a good comparison of it, but it's kind of one of those things like, do you kind of just do it little by little on the little upgrades or do you just go balls to the wall and just say, screw it, I'm just gonna like rip in a Band-Aid, you know, buy once, cry once kind of thing. I'm kind of leaning towards if you're on a budget, just get the base bushings or the stage one kit. And if you're not on a budget, just go ahead and get the full drop-in unit. And that's kind of where I'm leaning. But like I said, I haven't tried the full drop-in unit yet. Now with their full drop-in units, they do include everything Thing that we have in our stage two upgrades. But in addition to a whole new shifter where you can adjust the ride height of your shifter, you can also adjust like the width of the spacing of the gates. Like there's so much more adjustability that comes with it. And it's made out of higher quality materials that tend to last longer. Now, if you don't have a type R, there's a couple of other options. Like I mentioned earlier, one thing that Acuity doesn't make for the Type R is a short shifter adapter. And these are those little adapters that attach to the bottom of your shifter. Now, the reasoning was, was something about how the Type R shifter, the angles on it would put too much stress on the shifter if you did that. And that's why they don't make it. Now, those do exist from other brands. It's just Acuity doesn't make it. So if you have a 10, like if you have a Civic Si or just a standard Civic, I think you're gonna notice way bigger improvements if you upgrade your shifter versus the Type R, because the Type R shifter is already like the best of all the different shifters. So you're gonna see bigger gaps and in increase, if that makes sense. So knowing what I know now for a Type R, I would say if I'm on a budget, I would get the stage one kit. And if I wasn't on a budget, I'll probably go with the full drop-in unit. For a non-Type R Civic, and I have driven them, um, like the SIs and stuff, I would say get the stage two kit because you're gonna get the most improvement out of that, especially with the short shifter adapter if you're not on a budget. And then if you are on a budget, then you're probably gonna get the majority of the feel from the stage one kit. And that's just my two cents about this. I'm super excited for the future videos, guys. We got so much stuff coming up. We got exhaust videos, we got downpipe videos, we got intercooler videos, we got another Another intake video. I actually got another intake. I am also got a special hood that's going to be going on the car. We got some interesting heat wraps and stuff like that. So if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. But it ultimately comes down to this. What are your guys' thoughts on this? And for those of you out there who have tried all of this, and maybe you've tried the different upgrades, which one was the best bang for the buck according to you? And let me know. I'd love to talk about it with you. But until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.